I guess we're ready to go. If everybody's ready, uh, just give you a quick introduction. My name is Cal Hayes. I work for a company called Proco Products, located in Northern California. I'm actually Canadian. I still live in Canada, Northern Ontario, 225 miles north of, of uh, Toronto. So we do have quite a bit more snow than you folks do here. But uh, I'm here and I'm glad to present uh, Proco Products to you. The first uh, three and a half hours is going to be on the duct bill check valve and the rest of it's going to be on some new product that we have, all right? No, I promise I'll get it over with as quickly as I can. Everybody here familiar with Proco? Everybody know of us? All right, everybody says yes, right? Okay, so we are the leading manufacturers of rubber, Teflon, metal, fabric, expansion joints, and most recently the rubber duct bill check valve. Our manufacturing history of the expansion joints dates back to the old Uniroyal company who invented the rubber expansion joint in the 1930s. Purple Products, previously known as Protective Coatings of Fort Wayne, Indiana, began marketing rubber expansion joints under its short name in 1980. Protective Coatings, manufactured rubber expansion joints for Uniworld under private label from 65 to 85. At that point, Uniworld closed their sales division of expansion joints and Proco acquired all of the assets of protective coatings and Uniworld, including all of the tooling, specifications, and technology used in the expansion joint business. In 2005, when a duckbill patent expired in the United States, Proco began manufacturing the Proflex valve to supply to the global marketplace. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is discuss the duckbill check valve. Are you all familiar with duckbill check valves or the terminology duckbill? It looks similar to this. Everybody's seen them, used them, that kind of thing. Okay, we're going to run through it. Obviously, there is competitors out there that we do compete against every day. We consider that we have a good quality product. The first thing we're going to do is talk about the duckbill. What is a duckbill? It is a valve manufactured from rubber or synthetic elastomers and shaped like the beak of a duck. It is commonly used in municipal outfall diffusers, pump protection, and even medical applications to prevent contamination due to backflow. The inlet end of the valve is a slip-on or fastened over the outlet end of a supply line, and the discharge end, the duckbill, retains its natural flattened shape. When a fluid is pumped or drained through the supply line, and therefore the, through the duckbill, the flattened end opens to permit the pressurized fluids to pass. When the pressure is removed, however, the duckbill returns to its flattened shape, preventing flow, similar to what I have in my hand. Under flow, you can see that this valve, which is normally sitting like this, opens up, allows flow out to the environment or to an ocean outfall or to a river outfall. When the flow decreases on the inlet side, the valve goes back to a closed position and doesn't allow flow back into your pipe process. All right, duckbill check valves are passive. Reactive devices require no external me mechanisms or power sources to operate. The flexible rubber sleeve is normally closed but will react and open with as little as one inch of head pressure ensuring maximum flow with minimal pressure drop across the valve. This ease of operation also reduces standing water in sewer pipes where mosquitoes and other pests can thrive. <coughs> the flexible construction will pass large objects without blockage yet offers Exceptional backflow prevention will even seal around trap solids. Are you guys hearing an echo out there, or is it just me? Is there any way of... You can lower that a little bit in your shirt. Lower, lower oh, this? Okay. Is that better? Now I can hear your stomach growling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was earlier. All right, so let's try that again. Okay, so the advantage of the Series 700 duckbill check valve. All right, we have... A great, great brochure. Unfortunately, this trip up here, I got waylaid coming in through the snow. The packages didn't come with me. Obviously, I had a bunch of packages ready for all you folks who are not here. Bruce will have them at his office in Minneapolis if anybody wants to pick them up next week, right? All right, so we do have a full, full package. It's available on the website. So again, this is what it looks like. It's a full brochure on the duckbill check valve, which we'll get to. Designed to provide positive backflow prevention, quick interchange for maintenance ridden flapper type valves, and most importantly, no noisy or costly water hammer problems, and 35 to 50 years life expectancy. Okay? Series 710 flange and the series style 730 slip on. I'm only going to read the one column on the left because I'm going to be pressed for time. The right hand side basically talks about the slip on series, which is what I have here. 
basically the same overview. Style 710 can be supplied in any flange configuration. Standard vacuum ring is 316 stainless. Other specialty steels are also available. Can easily be interchanged with existing head wall flanges. So if you are installing, taking off an old flap type check valve for whatever reason, whether or not it's frozen in an open position, whether or not it's rusted, whether it's seized, you're planning on installing a duct bill check valve, you tell me what the bolt circle is around your old flap gate and we can drill and, and manufacture the check valve to your requirements. The valve can be rotated up to 30 to 35 degrees to allow easy fit on close tolerance head walls. Why I'm saying that is because there's another valve in the industry right now that's gone to a flat bottom check valve. All right, the patent on this style of check valve was expired in 2005. For whatever reason, they've gone to a flat bottom check valve. In that case, if you're installing this on a close tolerance head wall, where the bottom of the duckbill check valve is going to interfere with your install, for many, many years, myself, plus my competitors would just simply tell you to take this valve, rotate it, 30 to 35 degrees and as I'm rotating it you can see that we're now getting to a flat bottom check valve all right so on close tolerances if you're worried about this part of the valve hitting the river outfall or a concrete uh, port enclosure this now will clear it by slipping the valve okay very very simple very easy for you folks to do all right so I'm going to jump over the 730 again it's the same type of thing is NSF 61 a, a concern in this part of your state. NSF 61 is a material that's used to ensure that the product is good for potable water applications. All right, so you're probably going to run into it if you haven't already. Most, most of our product now has to be NSF. Our product is NSF 61 certified material. Okay, it takes the worry away from improperly used material on potable water application. Uh, every now and then I'm going to just throw pictures in to show you design, show you install, show you stuff that we've done. You can see the valve on the left is now the 710 series valve. You can see that it is a flanged unit. And again, it's installed as a diffuser in this case. So there's sewage effluent flowing up out of the pipe into this lagoon or the settling pond. At most cases, this is usually flooded or, or submerged into a water basin. The one on the right, you can see that this is a typical manhole. All right, so off that, you can see that we've installed a duckbill check valve, which is allowing water to flow out to the environment. The next two series of valves are often used to eliminate or diffuse water hammer. Water hammer, or more generally considered fluid hammer, is a pressure surge or a wave caused when a fluid, usually a liquid, but sometimes also a gas, in motion is forced to stop or change direction suddenly. Momentum change. Water hammer commonly occurs when a valve closes suddenly at the end of a pipeline system and a pressure wave propagates in the pipe. It is also known as hydraulic shock. How many people have problems with that in your everyday go to work? Everybody? Everybody's nodding yes? Yeah, everybody's got that problem. All right, this pressure wave can cause major problems from noise and vibration to pipe collapse. It is possible to reduce the effects of water hammer pulses with accumulators and other features. The Proflex valves are being used to solve these issues by installing either the inline 720, 740, or the 750 series of valves, which I'm going to show you in a second. Style 720 valve offers a full rubber flange, which also provides instant gasketing. The 740 uses a stainless steel internal expandable clamp. Both styles are ideally suited as excellent inline pump protection on all valve issues. So the valve I showed you a moment ago, goes on the end of the pipe. As you can see, it's concentric in shape. The lips flare out. The inline check valves, as I show on this slide, you can see is designed to fit inside of your pipe. All right, so obviously, always think in mind that when I'm installing this into a pipeline, I am reducing pipe flow. Pipe flow and head pressures are going to be pretty much the same as a, a lever and check type check valve. Okay, so think, think of that when you're thinking about Work, working with an inline check valve, okay? All right, the style 750, which is the one that we sell the most of, is a jacketed style of valve, and it utilizes the concentric check valve. So again, I mentioned a moment ago about it reducing pipe flow or flow. This one will not do that. This one I have in my hand is three inches. When the valve is in a full port design, it is also three inch design. All right, so you don't lose your flows. Okay, the style 750 inline check valve features an all elastomer, maintenance-free design, inner sleeve with no hinges 
or seals to bind or freeze. The 750 series valve has been designed for heavy duty applications such as abrasive slurries and sludge. The internal valve features low head loss with a full port design which opens with minimal head pressure and closes with any back pressure exerted on the valve. The 750 series is provided with two clean out ports. The next picture is going to show you that a little bit clearer. And is manufactured of carbon steel with an epoxy coating. The bolting dimensions are in accordance with an ANSI 125, 150, and we have also since done them in 300 pound drill. Available in sizes 2 inch through 36 inch, no hinges or seals that bind, abrasion resistant elastomers, maintenance free, uses the 710 valve insert for the replacement liner, and provides exceptional backflow prevention. Here's a quick example of this valve installed on the discharge of a pulse. This is in the Lockwood Green project in California, 12 inch diameter valves with vacuum supports. These valves were built for 600 PSI of back pressure. All right, so in this case, because they were designed for that much back pressure, we installed what's called a vacuum support into the actual valve. So under back pressure, when the pipes were, when the pressure was coming back towards the valve, this unit kept the valve from inverting, or in this case, this valve, if there was enough back pressure on the outside of the valve, this valve would tend to want to turn inside out. In this case, using a vacuum support, it doesn't do that. Most importantly, it also decreased uh, water hammer because of the flexibility. Instead of it being a gate that comes down and hits hard, causing a water hammer or valve slam, because it's made out of an elastomer, it allows to flex and take away the, the uh, valve hammer or valve slam. All right, next shot. I'm going to get Bruce to kick me when I get close to being finished. Comparative issues. What are we doing? Why? What are we replacing in this case? Comparative issues, as shown in picture number one, the real downfall of the traditional flapper type check valve is the structure and the material makeup. The flap portion is basically reliant on head pressures to force the flap open. This will lead to higher than required inlet pressures and increased head to open. If this style is to be installed in wave action areas, then water hammer and valve slam can be continual with each wave moment, movement. Sorry. Rusting, seizing, freezing, and metal swistings are just a few of the few common maintenance issues. You can see the picture here. This is around the Riverwalk in San Antonio, Texas. There's about 150 of these valves. They're all six inch diameter. And you can see the traditional issues that you folks have with a traditional flap gate, and that is it's rusted in an open position. It's not going to work when you need it to. All right. Superb advantages. This is a great, great shot. This is a perfect example of why a duckbill check valve should be specified and why folks like you should really think about when you have problems with a traditional flap gate, get rid of it, install a duckbill check valve. What do we see here? This valve is submerged, about a third of the valve is submerged in sand, rocks, gravel. In this part of the, part of the year, or this time of the year, you'd see ice built up around the extremity of the valve. The neat thing about this valve if it was a traditional flat gate valve in that position, obviously it wouldn't open, correct? It's, it's stuck. There's mud in front of it, it's not going to open. The neat thing about a duckbill check valve, in that same application, the bottom of it submerged in sand, the top of the valve, when head pressure comes down the pipe, encourages the top part of the valve to start to open, which again washes away the gravel and the sand, and in this case the ice that's gathered up in the front of the lip, allowing the valve to flow. All right, so a great, great advantage why a duckbill check valve is, is preferred. All right, Series 700 has opposing rubber lips as the only restriction from inlet pressure. With as little as one inch of water column, the valve will flex open and allow flow. You can see in this picture, head pressure has opened the valve. You can see that it was filled with mud right up here. And you can see in this case where the water has washed away the sand from the front of the valve, allowing the valve to work properly. All right? Here's a great, great example. How many folks here are working in the sewage industry? Lots of you? All right, so do you also have settling tanks that are filled with sewage and they settle and you use either coarse air bubble diffusers at the bottom? A lot of different areas have different ways of treating your sewage. In this application, and again, I'm not familiar with your hydraulic issues here. Will the water lift the tank up out of the ground in this part of the country? I'm not sure. In this case, you can see that these valves have been strategically put around the bottom of this tank. These are 2 million gallon sewage settling reservoirs. 24 valves put around the 
the, the interior looking exactly like that. What are they called? They're called hydraulic pressure relief valves. Okay, the old school way was that we would put a little uh, flap gate around the perimeter. When the hydraulic pressure on the outside of the tank got high enough, it would allow water to drift into the tank, stopping the tank from lifting up out of the ground due to hydraulic pressures. All right, so just another quick example. Why do flap gates fail? Flap gates typically attach to culverts that are placed through tidal dikes. Okay, I'm going to run out of time, so I'm going to go quickly here. Picture number one, high back floor. Vandalism has reversed the flap, causing zero back pressure. <coughs> Bottom picture is one I took. This was in Australia. These are 30-inch diameter check valves that obviously were rusted and seized because of the salt water in the, in the ocean there. All right, so flap gate replacement again. Three 36-inch diameter valves. These were flap gate valves. They were only installed for six years, and they had all failed due to the brackish water, corrosion, and maintenance issues. So again, you can see the duckbill check valves installed. Cavalshire, Australia, really, really neat story behind this. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. It says that they could hear a lot of slamming. About a mile and a half back from this onset, there's a brand new residential area. They could hear valves. They could hear banging at night. They had no idea where the sound was coming from. They finally figured out that it was these flaps slamming at night through the tides, okay, through the, through the wave action. So we took them out and we obviously installed duckbill check valves. Okay, just some examples of areas. Diffusion, you can see how diffusers are working, Sing, single manifold. Again, if you've got issues with water, uh, if you've got issues with sewage outfalls into a river, you get brown pooling. I don't know how extreme you folks go with your, with your uh, sewage uh, uh, clarification. If the water that's being uh, dispensed out into the rivers are completely clean, then there's not really an issue with diffusion. But in most cases, there is some concern. Diffuser project located in Arizona, 14 pieces, 12 inch, 7 10s, were installed on a 48 inch diameter manifold. That's what I'm discussing with, with uh, the applications that we can use the duct bill for. Okay, tank overflow protection, anywhere that you've got a reservoir. How do you keep bugs and birds and animals from crawling up the overflow pipes? A great application is to install a duct bill check valve. All right, Series 700, I mentioned a moment ago, or sorry, uh, NSF. This is the provision is a nationally recognized benchmark for setting the health effects standards for all devices, components, and materials that come in contact with drinking water. Okay, all of our valves are tested at the Water Research Lab in Logan, Utah. Same place that you would see a Millikan valve tested, a Singer valve, a clay valve, whatever type of valve you may or may not be working with. Most of them are tested at the Water Research Lab. Okay, here's a quick example of flow testing. This is what happens, end results, 1.7 feet of head loss at 17,000 gallons per minute. And here's the kind of test results that we will supply to you when you purchase these valves. What is pressure drop? Again, this is a very large diameter valve, 60 inch diameter valves. What we're showing here is just another quick example of, in this case, it was a swing gate installed. They took it out and they ended up putting in the 60 inch diameter slip on. Application review, where can we use the duckbill check valve? Every one of you that are sitting here today have applications in these areas. Wastewater treatment plant, sewer systems, potable water, pump protection, airport runways, parking lots, residential areas, stormwater discharge, flood control, effluent diffusers, retrofit systems, and mining outfall and tailings pond overflow pipes. Huge benefits, we mentioned in a moment ago. Here's some of our competitors' valves. All right, no maintenance, no jammed valves due to gravel, sand, or ice buildup. No rusted hinges, nor do we worry about costly replacement. And most importantly, again, 35 to 50 year service life. You can see this valve. This is a valve that comes in from Sweden. It's becoming more and more of a, of a uh, valve sold in America. And you can see this valve is filled with sand and gravel. So obviously the valve cannot open and allow flow. This one's a traditional gate. You can see it again, it's got gravel in front. It's not going to open. And this one is just showing that the hinge pins are completely seized and solid. All right, questions on that? I got two more things I want to show you real quick and then I'm out. Any questions on duct bills? The, uh, the chlorine will eventually swell the, the material of the duct bill. No, uh, we brought a catalog with us. I can show you that in a minute. We have an elastomer selection guide. Before we build any valve for you, we will always come to you and say, what's the service? What, the, what's flowing through the pipe? If there is chlorine, like you mentioned, then we would build the valve with, let's say, EPDM or a high resistant unit and that type of material. Okay, we always choose the material to build a valve with. Okay? 
Anything else? Anybody got questions? How about if that duct bill is out in the sun? How long? Again, on the exterior of the valve, we may use a hypolon coating. You know, if I'm going to drop these valves into, let's say, Phoenix, Arizona, I'll put a hypolon coating on it or a 1A thick actual full hypolon cover on this valve to, to uh, resist ozone and sunlight applications. We'll always make sure that we do that. Anything else? All right, we're going to quickly go rubber expansion joints. Everybody knows what expansion joint does. It stops vibration, stops pipe movements. When pumps start up, you get a certain amount of shutter. This will stop it up. We've got a brand new expansion joint, and that's the reason I'm showing you this. When to use a rubber expansion joint, you can see that it's taken up vibration. What is an expansion joint? It talks to you about installs, where should you install piping. This is what I want to show you real, real quick. Want to make more noise? This is a brand new expansion joint for Proco. It's called the 233L and 234 Buried Service. I know I was going to talk duck bills, but I just want to show you this. It's a buried service expansion joint, or it's a expansion joint used for lots of lateral movements. How many folks here are familiar with EBA, EBA flex tents? They're commonly used for a lot of lateral offsets. A lot of the engineering world came to folks like us and said, we need a joint that can do the same type of lateral movements. These expansion joints of four convolution, as you can see in this brochure, will give you up to eight inches of lateral offset. All right, so on our website, there's a full, full information sheet on this expansion joint. It's called the 233, 234L, and it's a great expansion joint when it comes to lateral offsets. If you're breaking a pipe into a reservoir, if you're worried about a bridge crossing, a certain amount of settlement, this is a great expansion joint, okay? All right, uh, that's a quick overview. The last thing that I've got to show you is a brand new gasket that we have. How many people here work with PVC or HDP fiberglass? Is that something that happens in this part of? Yeah. Different states seem to have different worlds. What's your biggest concern when you're bolting up two plastic flanges? Breaking the flange, is that common? What's the reason that the flanges break? It's not so much that you did something wrong. It's not so much that there's anything wrong with the flange manufacturer. The big issue was, was that you were probably using a red rubber gasket or something that's harder to torque shut than the actual flange manufacturer would suggest. We have what's called the 9013 sealing gasket. It's got annular rings both sides of the gasket. As I'm tightening these bolts, this one and this one, the soft rubber that's in these rings is moving away from directly below the bolt hole to the area between the bolts where you normally would have an area of leak path with a hard rubber gasket. All right, so quick example, a four inch diameter gasket 12.8 foot-pounds of torque to give you positive seal. All right, so keep it in mind. Again, it's on our website. It's there. Anything else? Uh, anybody got any questions on expansion joints? We're all good? Okay, penetration seal. You're all familiar with that? Equal to link seal. We do have that as well. All right, so if you're having issues with getting link seal, which is what's normally wrapped around a pipe to create positive seal, for those of you that don't know it, a traditional link seal wrapped around a piece of pipe like this, breaking through a hole in the wall, will give you 40 feet of head or 20 psi positive seal. All right, so that's the end of my presentation. Quick example of penetration seal, showing you how it is creating a positive seal. All right, that's the <coughs> typical link seal. We call it pen seal. The last summer selection guide, I mentioned it to you a moment ago, it's in the back of every one of our catalogs. You can go in there with a chemical that you may be worried about, it'll give you the type of rubber you should be using. Okay? Technical speaking, valve slam, and that's the end. Okay, sorry, I'm a little bit over my time, but... Mention our booth at 318. Oh, booth 318 downstairs, if anybody's got any questions. All right, we're there, we've got some literature there. Um, I think we can pretty much answer any of your questions if you're all heading down in a half an hour or so. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.